let's talk about Trump and his abortion comments. Because he was asked by NBC in Michigan whether he's going to vote for a Florida law. Florida made its abortion limit six weeks. But there's a ballot measure in Florida and Nevada and Arizona this November to try to get Democrats to the polls, and they're hoping to vote for Kamala and other Dems, that would expand the abortion procedure, or the abortion limits in Florida to be beyond row levels. I mean, to 24 weeks, they say viability, which is 24 to 28 weeks that you can have an abortion up to. And there's a health, a health exception for the mother, which any pro-lifer will tell you in, entirely swallows the ban, any kind of sort of ban. If, you can find doctors who in the ninth month will say the mother's mental health requires an abortion. So this is why pro-lifers are recoiling in response to this amendment. And Trump was asked about it by this reporter. Do we have it, um, his comments? Yes, we do, right? Here it is, SOT 19. You I mean, overturn I think Roe does, yeah. and you want abortion to be a states' rights issue. In Florida, the state that you are a resident of, there's an uh, abortion-related amendment on yeah. the ballot to overturn the six-week ban in mm-hmm. Florida. How are you going to vote on that? Well, I think the six week is too short. Uh, it has to be more time, and so that's. And I've told them that I want more weeks. So you'll vote in favor of the amendment? I'm, I'm voting that. I am going to be voting that we need more than six weeks. So he doesn't say he's going to vote for this amendment, but he says, I'm voting that we we need more than six weeks, which I don't think is an option. I think it's either you vote for the amendment or you don't. But in any event, now the campaign is trying to walk it back a bit, Rick, saying he wasn't saying he's in favor of the amendment. And, you know, the left is having some, some making some hay out of this, saying he doesn't know where he stands. He's a flip-flopper, just like, just like they say Kamala is. And then the pro-life side, has spoken out quite a bit about this saying, oh my, like, what is he doing? Well, first of all, you won't be surprised I'm not an expert on abortion, but let me give you my opinion. (laughs) I'm so thankful that Donald Trump uh, has left this up to the states. I think it's the right decision to not have a federal uh, ban or uh, uh, some sort of a law that would mandate it federally. What I do love is that there's an acquiescence to the states. What works in some states doesn't work in others. And so I think the media is correct in trying to say to President Trump, you live in Florida, how are you gonna vote? But one thing that we know is absolutely uh, certain, Donald Trump is pro-life. Look what he's done to the Supreme Court. We, I, I do know that uh, through my 25 years in politics, pro-life community has been asking to overturn Roe v. Wade. Every single president promised to go after that and do that. And there's only one that was able to do that, and that's Donald Trump. And so he's demonstrated that he is absolutely pro-life. These questions now, as we get into the details, are very difficult. And I think Donald Trump has been very respectful about the process and is now saying Uh, let's just make sure that the Democrats don't play games here. We should have some guardrails, but let the states figure out those guardrails. Mm. Well, he's gotten articles like this from National Review. uh, Trump stabs Florida pro-lifers in the front. Uh, They're unhappy about this and about the fact that he also said he wants, he's going to put um, some policy in place that mandates coverage of IVF either by the government or by insurance companies. Look, those of us who are pro IVF, it it sounds good in theory, but how are we going to pay for that? This sounds like an Obamacare mandate. And Trump kind of veers sometimes toward big government, which isn't great. Uh, You know, big spending, bottomless, you know, bags of cash, which we don't have. Look, what what I would say about the IVF issue is that we definitely have a population problem. If you dig deep into some of our labor issues and the future of the United States, we have to have a labor force. We have to have birth rates that go up. And we're struggling with that. A, A lot of countries around the world are struggling with that. And so being able to utilize technology in order to increase our birth rates through IVF, I think it's fantastic. We should celebrate technology. God gave us the ability to use technology. I grew up evangelical Christian, and I can tell you every single person in my family, and there are a lot of evangelical ministers, support the idea that IVF is allowing 
families to be able to have kids utilizing the technology and the brain power that God gave us to be able to expand their family and, and have, uh, you know, a celebration of life. Right. It's just, and I, I mean, I don't mean to diminish your statement because there are some Republicans who disagree with that, who don't like IVF because sure. it creates embryos that may or may not get used. But IVF costs about 20,000 bucks a cycle. There were about 390,000 of them just in 2022. That averages out to about, about 7.8 billion uh, for just that one year. So where are we going to get the money, right? Where are we going to get the money? If we're going to make the government pay, or we're going to make private insurance pay. That's going to jack up prices and um, premiums. And, you know, it sounds to many just like a an empty campaign promise meant to shore up his vote with the women, Rick. Well, let's let's be honest about one thing. Donald Trump doesn't do empty campaign promises. I could go through the list of foreign policy promises that he uh, promised in the campaign and delivered when other people didn't. And so I would take it to the bank that if Donald Trump says something, he's going to deliver on it. He's not a politician. He is somebody who is thoughtful. And I can tell you, being in the Oval Office with him, when there are big issues, he's not thinking about partisan politics. He is literally the guy who wants to find a solution to the problems. And a lot of times, as this example shows, he's the guy that doesn't stick with whatever the partisan lingo is. He's mm -hmm. looking at the situation and he tries to say, okay, what's the solution? He does get in trouble that he is not a partisan on all of these issues. I'll give you that. What do you make of the fact that, you know, Dasha Burns of NBC gets in Trump's face to ask him about a voter ballot initiative where Trump lives in Florida. And I saw you raising this point on X. What's Kamala Harris's home state again? <laughs> My state of California. And, and she didn't say anything about the debacle that we just had two nights ago about reparations, where Democrats promised Black people in California that they would be paid for uh, all of these problems of the past. They promised them, Megan, for a year and a half, we've been telling, they've been telling the black voters in California, you are going to get paid. We've had story upon story about it in the LA Times and the Sacramento Bee. And then in the dead of night, when it was time for a vote, what did they do? They pulled it. They said, we're not voting on it. And people are furious about the, 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 the being duped. They literally used black people in California for a year and a half to pretend like we've got something coming for you. And, and by the way, let's, re, let's also state very clearly, the Democrats have a super majority in Sacramento. They don't even, uh, they can't be stopped by Republicans. Uh, the state Senate, the state assembly, and the governor, Gavin Newsom, are all Democrats in a super majority, and they can do anything they want. They pulled the bill and people are furious. It's a big story in California and our media is still not covering it. If you're tired of the same old coffee from those mega corporations pushing their woke agendas, listen up. It's time to take a stand and support a brand that truly embodies American values, Blackout Coffee. These guys stand with hardworking Americans who believe in family, faith, and freedom. They roast some of the most incredible coffee you will ever taste using only premium grade beans, roasted, and then shipped to you within 48 hours. And for the cold brew fans, Blackout Coffee is excited to announce the launch of their two new ready-to-drink cold brew coffee latte options. Don't settle for less. Make the switch to Blackout Coffee. Head on over to blackoutcoffee.com slash MK or just use the code MK when you're checking out for 20% off your first order. Blackoutcoffee.com slash MK. The code is MK. Join the movement. Taste the difference. Remember, with every sip, you are supporting a brand that stands for America. Be awake, not woke. Thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.